Hello everyone and welcome to the VR Fitness Summit panel, The History of Verzoom. Uh, my name is Rob, I'm from VZ Fit, and I'm here to introduce your panelists today. Uh, up first we have uh, Eric Jansen, he's the CEO of Verzoom and he has a long history of executive technology industry background in system software engineering, marketing, and sales. Uh, next up we have Eric Malifu, he is the CTO of Verzoom. Uh, Eric has over 25 years of experience in the video games industry. Uh, he worked for Harmonix as a lead engineer and worked on Guitar Hero, Rock Band, and Dent Central. And for our moderator today, we have Kevin Brook. Uh, Kevin is a reporter for VR Fitness Insider. Uh, he's a VR enthusiast, and he also is an avid VZ Fit user. Uh, so let's bring it over to the guys. Thanks, John. Hi, so do you want me to, to start then? We talk a little bit about you guys, uh, where you started from, what the original vision was and, um, and how it all began. Well, uh, at, the, at the very beginning, the idea was we understood that VR could be used in combination with um, stationary bikes and fitness equipment to create a new kind of activity right, that you couldn't do without um, without VR. Uh, the most obvious thing being like biking, but as we'll explain, that was actually the last thing we did because we understood uh, that you could use this medium for fantastical kinds of things that you couldn't do in the real world. And that was really okay. our, our, first, our first generation of, of product. Uh, and again, so basically, as soon as VR launched, you had ideas of what you could use it for. So yeah, we were prototyping yeah. things like that uh, early on, as soon as VR came out. Uh, and, you know, I was at a game company, so we were making things like um, music visualizers in VR. Uh, I did a silly game, you know, based on log rolling, because VR makes you think about things you could do with your physical body that you just wouldn't think would be fun to do with a controller in your hand. And a game company called Harmonix specialized in making games that use your whole body like we made dance central and we made any grab which used the eye toy camera and oh. most famously we used guitar hero and rock band to popularize instruments so when vr came out you know it was all about what is the greatest thing to do with it and you know in meeting up with eric who's an avid cyclist uh we figured actually like exercising you know using gaming in vr for good was worth you know founding and uh thinking through like what kind of a business you know what kind of a company could be made out of that right okay so what sort of year is this then that you got together and started for zoom oh, dk ones yeah yeah we said in 2014 i think the dk1 came out uh from palmer lucky uh a kickstarter and we had our hands on one of those and connected it to a bike that we rigged up with sensors and programming with an arduino I remember Eric uh, putting tape on the back wheel of the bike so we could measure how fast it went around. And, right. uh, you know, we, we created a little terrain and, and just rode around. And that felt good. But what felt great was when we did something kind of fantastical, which was we made the bike fly, you know, kind of ET. And then, right. you know, we connected your pedaling with your flying, and that felt like Superman. So we knew there was something in there and, you know, set about, like, trying to figure out these experiences that could get you to pedal because anything that made you move in VR could be, you know, a workout. Uh, wow. and, and we didn't want, you know, we wanted to make an experience where we didn't stick a calorie meter in front of you, you know, or a hill climb. We wanted you playing the game to be the workout and we wanted it to be obvious in the minute you put the VR headset on, you know, what you're supposed to do. And um, the first thing we, we actually did wasn't a bicycle. We um, downloaded a horse, you know, I say downloaded, but, you know, we used a um, yeah. horse model yeah. and we put our viewpoint on the back of the horse and what was initially a test, you know, just immediately you felt a connection to this, this horse, you know, and we realized that VR was going to be this thing that could be very personal and you would be attached to your avatar. And that was how we uh, created our first set of games, which we called uh, Verzoom Arcade. Uh, we made 11 different kinds of experiences where you could be a race car or a tank or a Pegasus, you know, from that flying uh, horse idea. And yeah. um, we put it on all of the VR headsets at the time, which 
uh, were PC headsets. So we had to make these uh, appealing to gamers. You know, we gave them games and high scores and leaderboards. And that was, was our first product. We built um, a bike to go along with those games because that was the thing we wanted to give you um, exercise and you just had to buy the bike. You didn't have to hook up anything or have anything else besides the VR headset. Yeah, we assumed that you already had VR. So it was the simplest, lowest friction way to allow you to use our content, right? So it's a, you don't have to go out and buy a bike and put a bunch of things together. You just order this bike off of Amazon and off you yeah. go. And the first round of VR wasn't focused on fitness and the kind of things we wanted to do with it. You know, they were very much focused on making games because uh, that's the simplest way to explain why you should get VR. And we've always seen VR's potential as bigger, you know, a gamifying things. So, um, but we made our, you know, our games and our bike, and it helped to have all that Guitar Hero and Rock Band production experience. So we have connections to factories, you know, that could help us make those things and um, sell them. So we were doing all of that as a startup for the first couple of years of existence. Right. I mean, is this, I know you were software developers and game developers. Was the bike your first actual hardware? Yeah, the, the first the first actual hardware was the Verzoom bike. Um, okay. So it's funny. Um, we've kind of come full circle now, but we started out putting sensors on an actual bike. And yeah. then, you know, we saw trainers and we saw how people did things on bikes and realized just for the cheapest, you know, most like best designed experience, we should make our own bike for this. And I have a version here next to me, uh, but Rob can also show a version of it. Um, Hi, okay. But yeah, you know, this was our original bike and you can see it's actually got like triggers and, and controllers. We were gonna do a lot more with that. But it also wasn't the kind of bike that a real fitness enthusiast would use. And you, you wouldn't see those kind of folding bikes in gyms. And right. That kind of became our next, uh, you know, our next conquest because um, after we had gotten this thing out to a lot of home consumers, uh, VR companies started turning their attention to businesses. Right. Okay. Yeah. I went in a business direction for a year. There's, yeah. there's a reason why there's so many different kinds of bikes out there, right? Because people's bodies are so different and, and, and their needs are for, you know, lightweight for the home and heavy duty for the gym and, and so one of the problems that we ran into with the VZ bike is it was an easy way for a consumer to use our, our content, which is really what our business is about, is about our, our games. Uh, but you know, people would say, you know, it's a little small for me, and you know, it's falling apart because I beat on it every day and that kind of thing. So we knew that eventually we'd have to uh, support this range of, of you know, higher quality, different designs of both uh, consumer and, and commercial equipment. Yeah, so that's when the decision came to make the, the sensor kit. Yeah, was that kit. at the same time as the Quest came on the scene, or did the sensor come first? Well, the nothing was really linear, but uh, we had thought of the sensor kit very early on as just a way to um, sell something at a lower price point, kind of more portably, you know, that you could attach to your own bike. But right. then uh, there became a lot of interest uh, from the commercial sector and, and from the VR companies. Um, and we realized that the sensor kit is something that uh, gyms could attach, you know, to bikes they had, and they pay a lot more for those bikes than you or I do. So, right. um, but one thing they needed that the home consumer didn't need as much was an actual VR system, you know, and also like a TV to show other people next to you what you're doing in that VR headset. So that was the the advent of the product we now call VZ Fit. You know, it was a version that was designed for strictly workouts, you know, go into the gym, sit on a bike. Um, and uh, we, we made a run at that, you know, and it used PC VR. Uh, but then as you and I know, the, the next generation of VR uh, came out uh, about a year ago in the form of the Oculus Quest. Mm -hmm. And that, that yeah. changed you know, completely our equation. You know, it allowed us to focus again on consumers and uh, use the sensor, you know, to sell to consumers. We realized, you know, in the intervening years that smart bikes and other people's sensors and smart trainers had come a long way and could provide the kind of speed we needed and 
the latest uh, Oculus Quest headset still gave us that high-end PC VR feel and the ability to track your head, which is how you lean and steer in the games. So we, we devoted ourselves fully uh, to mobile yeah. VR at that point. Yeah, I mean, it opens up options for portability for people, huge. I mean, how many people have a bike next to their PC? You know, it's, it's quite limited. I couldn't even use my Rift S with PC Fit if I wanted to, because they're in separate rooms. So I'd need a, you know, 15 meter cable or something to, to run it through. So um, yeah. the, quest, the quest, I think, has really opened up the, the possibilities for bringing cardio machines into VR, because yeah. you, know, you might have your bike in a garage or in a basement or, or somewhere away from your PC. Um, or you can take it to the gym, I guess, if you're brave enough to, yeah. uh, you know, not care what people are around you think. And I guess that will, um, that will become more commonplace over time, I think. Yeah, that could happen. Again. <laughs> Obviously, COVID has taken its toll on gyms too. So, you know, we have seen a lot more business and interest, you know, because uh, people realize they need to get workouts while they're at home, uh, you know, more now with uh, the virus. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I was quarantined for months, so having all my stuff here has been yeah. Right. Yeah, we, our, our, our normal seasonality uh, for our business and everybody in the indoor fitness equipment business, things kind of peak in, in uh, January and they then tend to kind of trail off to typically kind of bottom in this month in, in August. But the pandemic kind of stretched it out, right? Because people couldn't go out, you know, and uh, yeah. couldn't go to the gym. And, you know, the general consensus in the industry is that that's really it's produced kind of a permanent change in consumer behavior. There's, you know, 59% of people that used to go to gyms in the recent survey said they don't ever plan to go back. So, the, the, and this, so this creates an audience of, you know, consumers who probably wouldn't have thought of using these kinds of products uh, before, yeah. but now, now they are. So we're, so we're glad to be, a, you know, help solve that problem for them. Uh, but yeah. our interest was in going wider with our platform, you know, so we we had gotten to that sensor kit point, and uh, and now we're uh, running on a bunch of different sensors and smart bikes, and soon uh, smart, you know, rowers and ellipticals and anything that supports the new Bluetooth standard. Uh, so yeah. that's that's relatively recent, you know, within the last year, even you know, a bunch of um, new hardware has supported that. Um, we're also going to push more into the different kinds of equipment. So we've been, you know, bike focused because that was the most natural thing to ex expect when you pedal, you go forward. And it was also an easy thing to steer with your head, you know, because you're, you're rooted on your seat and your handlebars. Um, but there's plenty of other exercise equipment you can do that well with. Um, we've tried it on rowers. Uh, we've tried it on ellipticals. And those, those both feel really good with Explore. Um, the ellipticals are a little tricky when you're playing the more gamey things like the tank game because your button is on like a moving handlebar. But um, for things that are more about just, just moving, and I think that's what you're going to see more, uh, um, it, it's a perfect fit, you know. Uh, the only place, you know, that we, we don't think we'll go ourselves is, uh, you know, VR on a, a treadmill just because treadmills are dangerous enough. Yeah, that sounds like an insurance suit waiting to happen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we won't be making the hardware anymore, and you know, it's it's um, it's really you know, the VR community is a bunch of experimenters and people who are trying new things. Uh, I mean, I'll bring up something else that you shouldn't try at home, but some people recently have taken VZ Fit out on actual bikes with yes. the headset on, and they oh, like I saw the video. I saw the their own body at risk. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, it's funny, like, I want to give them tips, you know, like, use the tilt mode instead of the lean mode, you know, <laughs> but I hesitate to encourage them in any way. Well, and one question that I'm interested in, I know you started out as PC VR, so I never experienced uh, PC Pit Play on the PC. I imagine you're able to push the graphics much harder on PC VR. When you moved to mobile, you didn't just go to the Quest, but you also support the Oculus Go as well. I wonder how hard the technical difficulties were for making what was a PC VR experience work on an Oculus Go. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we also like, uh, we even got onto those uh, mobile phones, Daydream and Gear VR. 
uh, before right, the go. Okay. And so what I'd say is that the, the go, it's got about a quarter of the power of the minimum spec like PC or a PSVR. Uh, right. So, you know, as game developers, you, you understand exactly what costs and what's important in your game. And we were able to deliver, uh, I'd say, 75% of that experience, you know, at 25% the cost. So, you know, we don't have 10,000 trees, you know, and as many shadows and uh, as much, you know, grass and vegetation and, and things like that. Uh, but we were able to keep, um, you know, the scale of all of the worlds because it's all about motion. Yeah. We're able to keep all the extra uh, players. Um, and, you know, most importantly, we're able to keep the, the connection, you know, the feeling of movement and uh, the ease of use of just, you know, getting on the bike, putting on the headset and pedaling. Um, that experience, you know, keeping it easy to get into is important. I just I know Oculus have announced that they're discontinuing the go. Is that, without your support, I would have to see, I guess, next year when they are no longer supporting it. So you'll be exclusively on the quest. Yeah, it's, well, it's definitely going to put, um, you know, the quest will definitely become the baseline, you know. Yeah. So we'll, we'll be taking full advantage of, of that. Um, and the quest offers something that the go never had, which is hand tracking and head tracking. And that's really the, you know, the most important thing that we wanted to bring to our customers and new customers attention is that the next version of VZ Fit will have a new main mode that you can play without a bike or any fitness equipment. You'll just be able to play uh, with your head and hand. Not even, not even hand controllers, you'll just use the hand tracking as well. Yeah, you know, if, if you just look at all the YouTube videos, um, how to do workouts, you know, you see 10, 20 minute workouts that will raise your heart rate. And we think that's a perfect way to pair the kind of uh, way we can move around the world as the motivation that you have no, for I doing that. So we're inventing kind of a, an interesting new uh, vehicle that you stand on and do your exercises and follow a trainer and you can move around the world the same way as you can on the bike. In fact, you'll be able to play with bike riders and other stand-up exercisers um, all together in multiplayer. So you can do that now, you can see an extra bike in the video. Um, but, you know, just imagine eight of you, you know, going down this road. This, is, this road happens to be in Montana, uh, yeah. going to the Sun Road. And, you know, we've picked locations that we ourselves have been to or uh, have seen vacations or our customers uh, have said that they loved. And right. we realize there's so many miles of um, world to cover, you know, that we actually need our customers to help us make these rides and radar rides. Um, yeah. You know, and something we really, um, that video opens up that we hadn't talked about was the creation of this whole new game that's based on street view imagery. Uh, so we still have our collection of games that are those kind of fantasy avatars, but this new um, product called Explore lets you go anywhere in the world that street view is gone and make your own rides and share your own rides with AI and multiplayer built in. Yeah, I have to say, Explorer is what BZ Fit is all about for me. I'm exclusively on Explorer now. Yeah. But and what I think, I'm, because it's obviously photo realistic, I kind of feel like you get a much better graphical experience than you do on BZ Fit Clay. And so we hope to combine those apps. So once we have the new stand up mode, um, we may bring those uh, virtual like play experiences into that game together. Uh, so, for instance, we have uh, paddling around the lake, you know, kayak around a lake experience. You'll be able to do that as a stand-up paddleboard, you know, without. Oh, okay. So you you look down and see yourself on a on a standing board, you mean, rather than a, a yeah, paddle. yeah. And you know, that's something else. You know, we we uh, have experience with, um, you know, and so we we uh, we just want to replicate the kinds of things that we do in real life exercise in Brazil, and yeah. make that feel as you know quick and easy as possible and also if possible make you feel like an even better you know athlete than you are you know that's that's always, that's really always important in vr because you need to kind of feel like a badass doing what you're doing if the game makes you feel sure. yeah that's the trick like, with all games right in guitar hero you, you know you're playing a plastic guitar yeah you're not Jimi hendrix but but you probably uh, know, you know, the guitar line and, and have more rhythm and appreciate what it takes to be a Jimi Hendrix than before a game like Guitar Hero came out. So, 
Yeah, that's it. But if the game can enhance the aspects that make you feel good and eliminate the bits that make you feel, you yeah, know, you see people watching people play VR and they look kind of like idiots, but when you've got the headset on, it feels right. totally different. It kind of goes back to the, to the original conception, which is we're, we're, we're trying to solve a problem for the customers that have difficulty motivating themselves to exercise in some regular way for some reasonable period of time. And if you kind of beat them over the head and, you know, tell them they should do this, I mean, they're not, they're going to try it, but then they're going to get tired of it. So our objective, our objective was always to be, to make it fun and varied and something that you want to do versus something you feel like you should do in this case. Uh, and then we have this Brunel study that was done recently that actually measured the effect and effectiveness. I think that uh, you, you, you covered that story. Yes, yes, I did. It was effects of music as well, wasn't it, on the experience, I think. Yeah, um, yeah it was a very, I mean, it, it, it scientifically measured what's happening, and the term they use is disassociation. That it basically, it's a fancy scientific term for you're sort of wrapped up in what's going on. You don't feel tired. You don't feel you're sweating. You know, you're, you're distracted, you know, from, from, from your physics. It's, so it's very much like other kinds of physical activity that you do that you find enjoyable for your cyclist i mean for me i don't notice i'm getting tired because i enjoy the cycling for other people that's dance or tennis or whatever whatever physically engages them that they find you know compelling and enjoyable and this is a new one yeah yeah i know for me i mean my bike hadn't been used for years it was just a closed source and now i'm using it three four times a week um even more with this summer challenge it was 20 days in a row to, that's to, great I mean, you know, our, our goal is like to make all those bikes, you know, worthwhile again. And we're just motivated by all the possibilities in VR. You know, we're trying to solve all the problems that we encounter in Explore. Right now, the problem is so many people are making rides that we need a better way to to find them, you know, and rate the right. best ones. And, and we're thinking about ways that people can add things to rides, you know, annotations or pop-ups. Uh, beyond that, you know, gameplay we can add to the rides. And with the hand controllers, you know, we're going to continue to support fitness equipment. So, you know, this will be a game where if you're a bike rider now and you just uh, want to get off and do different kinds of, uh, you know, squats, lunges, you know, arm lift kind of workouts, you can do that. And if you start out, you know, as a stand-up exerciser and notice that we connect all the fitness equipment, you can do that too. You know, there's fitness equipment, has a purpose, you know, it makes it easier to exercise or, you know, uh, more comfortably like exercise for longer periods of time inside. So, um, yeah. we do think that's a big differentiation for us, uh, and we'll continue. So, to be. so are you saying someone could use the bike and then get off the bike and within the same workout? So just yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's the idea is, um, you know, the rides, uh, will be the, the same, but you'll wow. change the kind of, it'll essentially kind of change the avatar you have and it'll change the kind of trainer you have. So if you're on a bike right now and you have a trainer who's riding ahead of you and giving you encouragement, but what she does is ride slower or faster to get you to do uh, different intervals, um, we'll have somebody you know who's riding in front of you but doing the kinds of exercises you could be doing. Um, yeah. Or you could decide to ride without a trainer and just you know move your hands you know as if you were wanted to walk or jog down you know your favorite neighborhood route. Um also, with the, the summer challenge that we've just done, before I was using it purely as a workout, I would set my bike up for a 30-minute hill climb and Feezy Fit Explorer was kind of the world that would take me off, take my mind off of doing that. With this challenge, I've actually got into the travel aspect more as well. I would stop at locations and get off the bike and, and look around it yeah. and switch, switch to the 2D mode as well. And see it. You know, you touched on something else that's, important for people to know about Explore, which is um, if you see the videos online, it sort of looks like uh, a video, you know, like, and, and lots of gyms have video rides, you know, but besides being in VR, the important thing to know is, is that you actually have control, you know, uh, yeah. you are doing all the steering. And if you ride an open ride, as opposed to one that has like a route, you can turn, you know, left instead of go forward when you want to. Uh, you can actually yeah, you know, ride know. Any, anywhere you want, which you can never do in a movie. You know? Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It is amazing. I think. I think. 
it's funny because when I talk about VT, uh, when I talk about VR to people, VT Fit Explorer is one of the things I talk about the most. Because to me, to have a standalone headset and a bike that you can use anywhere, and now all of it coming in at a consumer price point that is actually affordable for people. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Even three or four years ago, you just wouldn't have thought. Yeah. Would be. So I, I'm kind of excited about the travel aspect of it because you've got Google Wanda and Google Earth, but you've got something that you can actually walk around the town and explore in. It's, it's kind of clicking a mouse or clicking a controller to move back. And I think this makes it so much more fun. Yeah, that'll yeah, be a very popular new new version. There's just, just literally stand, you know, walking tours, just going someplace where you want to go and walk around and stop and take a picture. Yeah, it's fantastic. And even and for friends and relatives and stuff, if you've got like grandparents and you want to show them where they grew up, and, you know. They, in some ways, uh, we're doing AR in VR. You know, by the. Um, pop-ups too, you know, that you can turn on in cities to see, you know, what yeah. these locations are around you. And we want that to grow and become more informational, you know, because when you ride by something that has some history, uh, it's great to be able to look that up. And uh, I'd love to be able to go there with personal, you know, rides that people make, you know, to really like tell you what's fantastic about this ride or, you know, what's around that corner. And, you know, it can be personally meaningful or just historically meaningful, but um we think there's going to be a lot of expression you know that people can can give each other through or explore and we, we yeah, I, I, I found that quite an interesting part of it and also as the sort of communities grow you've got people on the facebook group sharing their rides and stuff yeah um, there's um sean tamlin who is an intrepid explorer he's gone all around japan now he's going across the entire um, yeah, he's a, he's a fantastic. Um, I love I love his pictures that he shows of all these like towns that he's found. Uh, the kind of places like you you'd never see on TV because they don't. Yeah, exactly. You, you, yeah. you took one ride through Russia and took all these pictures of these beautiful, yeah, houses, brightly colored houses in the, in the countryside in Russia. You probably never imagined were there. It's kind of buildings I've never seen before. It all looks yeah, exactly. right. Yeah. <laughs> I just, um, I'll tell you, you know, so we, you know, are seeing people make new things and sometimes they'll experience, you know, difficulties with some kind of a ride or another, you know, and we'll try to figure out what went wrong. But usually what I'm struck by is like, wow, this is an amazing, you know, ride, you know, like I've never been here. What is this? Oh, it's Norway. Oh, you know, and, and, uh, you know, and then I'm more happy to fix the bug, you know, because, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah I, that's, I, what, I, that's what makes us different, you know, from a game that's just got twenty prepackaged rides. You know, yeah. is we want everything that you could do, you know, to yeah. work. Yeah. And Google yeah. has been crazy, you know, with how many places they've taken their cars. And we can also work with uh, like handheld rigs that people have, you know, taken along hiking trails and yeah. they've well, put them on yeah. kayaks down the Colorado River. And uh, oh, that would be so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Google's about 10, 10 million miles of, of roads and paths. and It's, what, what I like about it is because a bike, you can, you know, someone who's riding every day, you can put in hundreds of miles a week, potentially. Mm. You need that kind of unlimited scope that Explorer gives you. Like, it's, it doesn't matter who's riding it, it's big enough. It's, there's always new places to discover. There's there's an unlimited amount. And we're going to make that evident in the game by incorporating, you know, a map, you know, the kind of thing that Wander has where you'll be able to see the rides, you know, like where they are, where you've gone, um, you know, see where you are right now. Because, you know, a neat feature of Wander that I think will be fun to do is just like random location, you know. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, but just like seeing it, hotspots and stuff. I like that you, um, with the rides that you chose, one of them for the summer challenges, um, Rondo in Spain, because I, I guess you probably know, but if you start Google Earth VR, it's one of the places it drops you into. So I straight away recognized it because I've been there in, in Google Earth VR. So it was great to cycle through that experience. You know, awesome. Yeah. It was like. We got to give, give credit to the guy off screen, uh, Rob Collins, who made uh, 
those rides, you know, specifically for the VR Fit Summit. And he just had a, a stroke of inspiration, you know, in coming up with all those locations. Oh, you made some things that. Yeah. yeah. And then it was super gratifying to see everybody riding them. You know, this, the number of people we had, you know, close to a couple hundred people trying it uh, half the way around the world, you know, in terms of, yeah, the number of miles oh, wow. that people rode on it. And, you know, just for this, like, uh, one-month tournament. So we have had, I I think we'll continue to do tournaments like this on our own just because it's so motivating. And um, it kind of reminds me of an earlier one we did where it was a little bit like a scavenger hunt. We made a ride up Mount Rainier where some of the UFOs, yes, I remember. I thought of them, I got got some of them. (laughs) I like that. I loved... um, Going back to the summer challenge, I think I knew the Dolomites would be beautiful because it's it's famously so. But the Japanese ride was amazing to me because like the ocean, the archipelago, all the islands, the bridges and stuff. Um, there was an amazing, I don't know if it was a sunset or a sunrise at the end that was just looked yeah. incredible and incredibly VR. A few people put videos up of it, didn't they? But um, yeah, some real gems in there and i guess there's an almost unlimited amount of them out there for for people to find yeah i'm kind of getting sold on it as a travel app as well um i like the idea now of doing my 30 minute workout but once i've done that staying on the bike a bit longer and just exploring where i am and yeah i mean that's, again that kind of fits with the, with the conception of, of vz fit is not necessarily a hardcore fitness application right about working out and getting all hot and sweaty and drinking Gatorade and, you know, all that. But as a side effect of doing other things like hiking or, um, you know, uh, yeah. turn or uh, just, and, and it's, just, it's real exercise, but it's a different way. It certainly has that though, doesn't it? I mean, it caters to everybody because I did the review for BZ Fit Clay early in the year and I did the, the race track. Yeah. Um, I think the overall race track when we're racing the Formula One cars. That was absolutely exhausting trying to keep up with my lap times yeah. and trying to keep up with the other yeah. cars. It, 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 yeah. You don't always feel like doing that, right? Sometimes you just feel like going for a long walk, right? And that's no, the, the, the boat ride, like the, pe- the pedal one where you're yeah. feeding the ducks, is, is just so much more yeah. relaxing. You have got for everybody, for every kind of taste, but if you really want to push yourself, there's, there's stuff there that. Yeah. Well, we definitely wanted to make it a full range because we we don't also just think of it as an individual product. We think of it as a family product. So when you get a VZ Fit membership, uh, any number of your family can make like accounts and play that and have their own progress and their own leaderboards and their own settings. And, you know, hopefully like there's games, you know, that suit them you know, well. And that's that's why we, we made all those different experiences because some people... Yeah, that, that's something I've seen come up on the forums quite a lot. You actually only need one account, don't you? One sensor to have everyone on your family use it. Is that correct? Yeah. So, so right can... now the membership pays for your sensor and you can make, you know, the VZ Fit accounts you can then log in with, you can make unlimited amounts of. And we'll keep that That's going cool. once we play um, on the Oculus Store. When you download it, we're going to tie it to the owner's Oculus account. Uh, so basically anybody who logs in on that headset or a headset they own will be able to play it as well. Yeah. Are, are you envisioning VZ Fit to become more than just a bike mode then? The extra mode that you've got coming, you expect people not even with a bike to, to like this. You're going to make it... Well, you, you'll be well, able to use it either way. So I want to explain about basically two modes. Standing, right? right. Using the hand controllers that come with the Quest and uh, position tracking for steering. Uh, yeah. Or you know the more uh, the way that we've been use, using it now for for some time, which is with a bike. Yeah, if you think about it now, it would even be valuable. Um, and we're planning to drop the very first version of this on our VZ Fit customers next month. It'll be initially useful just as a way to try out Explore before you have a bike. You know, because now that you don't need, um, uh, you know, you can just you don't need to buy our hardware for it. So you can make an account and download the game, but right now you're kind of stuck when it says pedal the bike. So we're gonna allow it to be just a way that you can bypass that and get right in and, and see what it's like to move around. Um, I mean, 
that will become the new main mode because that's how everybody is going to download it from the Oculus Store. But well, you'll be very easily able to connect any device off the main menu. And then, you know, when you play it again, it'll be just like now, it drops you right into the bike mode. Did I just hear that right? It's coming to the Oculus Store, so it won't be an email anymore. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. That, <laughs> yes. So that's the big news. That's the big news. So, you know, right now the process is you have to download the app kind of behind the scenes. You know, mm. we're on the Oculus Store, but we haven't been on the Oculus Store front. And, you know, there were some technical issues for that. And those have been uh, worked out. And Oculus is also very excited about the stand-up mode where you can play it. Um, you know, without needing any extra hardware, because when right. people download something, they want to be able to play it right away. So that, um, you know, we don't have a uh, time to give out right today, but it's important for everybody to know that's what we're working on and toward. And yeah. so we, we hope 10 times the people get to experience it that way, because we know it's not an easy thing to hear about or, you know, once hearing about it, to find it, because you can't just search for it now in the store. Yeah, well, it's funny. I mean, I'm I'm a VR enthusiast. I even write for a VR fitness site. But I didn't try VZ Fit until I was invited to try it by you guys, mainly because I, I guess I was put off by the initial purchase point, because you had the sensor kit then. But also there was a kind of, I don't really know how to to get it, because it's, like you say, it's not on the Quest. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's there, people will, people will download it, won't they, and, and try it. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're incredibly excited. We've tried to make the current process work as well as it could, but you're right, you know, it's it's not the easiest thing. Everyone's time is valuable. And, you know, this will now be something that will just be right in the storefront in the fitness section, and you'll be able to download it and try it and play it immediately. And, uh, you know, get a lot of value out of it just, you know, from standing up uh, kind of exercises, you know, it'll be a full uh, fitness application. And then, you know, we'll, you'll realize, you know, you could also play this with any kind of fitness equipment you have. Um, you'll still be able to play all the old uh, play games with a bike on the side. And like I said, we'll bring more of those virtual experiences into the Oculus Store VZ Fit, you know, as time goes on. So you've and got then, lots, lots of plans for the future. Then. Yeah, and we, we, the way we work, you know, and we do consider ourselves a fitness service because we're continually, you know, adding features and game modes and gameplay. So, you know, in the past couple months, uh, you've seen us add um, snapshots, you know, the ability to upload like, you know, pictures of you with custom camera angles and poses, you know, because, you know, how it's great that you can travel anywhere around the world, but you really want to show that off. And then we realized Oh, everybody kind of looks the same, you know. Uh, so we, you know, gave everyone skin colors, and now you can uh, earn coins, you know, for driving along routes and customize your avatar with that. So yeah, I really, I really like the new snapshot feature. One, one thing, and I've said this to Robert. One thing I would love is if we could have like a scrapbook, so it where it keeps our pictures somewhere we can see where we've been. Kind of thing. Yeah, you want to also just be able to jump back to those places, right, and ride from there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. I think the the end of the story is we're interested in making VR, you know, the motivation or leveraging VR. Uh, so yeah. it's moving through these worlds, and we're always going to have something interesting to do or build that keeps it fresh. You know, so if it's gameplay that takes your mind off pedaling, or if it's seeing, you know, kind of unlimited sights um, in Explore, uh, they're both on the table, and um, you know, we hope to combine those apps. Thanks uh, for participating in the VR Fitness Summit and making that a success. Yeah, I, re I really want you to make another one already because I've really enjoyed it. Um, it. It's made me realize I can actually exercise a lot more than I thought I could because I, I use a rare machine, I, I do weights and I play VR fitness games as well. So I've done this on top of everything, but I realized I can actually do it on top. So I'll probably increase the amount of cycling that I've Congrats. Glad to hear it. Well, very good. Thank you again, Kevin. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, thanks, thanks for your time. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.